know kids and parents of kids and grandparent gra- grandparents. I'm not sporting a Mr. Google shirt like I usually do, which you don't know because you don't watch my channel. I have fluffy metal unicorns, thanks to Carl Francis, who sent me the shirt. Thank you, Carl. So, why am I talking to kids and not my normal viewers? Well, because my normal viewers would buy things that are behind me, or they would buy guitars like the Friedmany thing, or this Fendery goodness blue thing with the pickups and all that. If you're watching a review for the Fender LT25, you're very likely two kinds of people. People that watch anything I put up, you know who you are, and beginners, because that's what the Fender LT25 is for. That's what the, who the, that's who the something it is for. Language, not my strong suit. Um, so, what is the Fender LT25? To those of you who know about the guitar world, it is a beginner amp like the Line 6 Spider, like the Vox, not the audio, but the Vox something, Valvi something, all these beginner amps. They um, are small, they are light, they try to cover a lot of sounds, pretty much all the guitar sounds there are, so beginners can easily learn about guitar sounds and have everything that the guitar te- teacher throws at them ready leave available at home, from the metal to the country to the jingling acoustic thing, uh, a little bit of blues, Anything you would want to play, the amp should be able to handle and sound like it, not be it. Because a blues amp with a big speaker and all that stuff and an amazing microphone and a great studio is going to be the real deal. A beginner amp is supposed to sound like that, not be that or be a replacement for it. My good friend, Mr. Glenn Fricker, misunderstands that these beginner amps uh, are trying to be the real deal. No, it's supposed to sound like a metal amp, not be a metal amp. I want to make that distinction. These amps have to have ease of use, good price point. They have to be lightweight. They should have a tuner built in. Um, They should make it easy for you to jam along with something so that when your guitar teacher gives you a click track or a song to play with, You don't need to go through your stereo, you can use your amp to do that. Now, when I reviewed the Fender GT40, this is technically a smaller, cheaper version of the GT40, um, that has Bluetooth. I think that's already a little bit overkill, programming it with your app and all this. I mean, you're a kid. You're like three years old. I don't know how old are kids, something like that. You're like three or four playing metal guitar. I don't know, you might be 12. Do you really want to fiddle with your amp with Bluetooth? You could, but do you have to? Now, beaming Bluetooth songs to your amp is a great idea to play along with, but you could also use a cable. Unless you have an iPhone like me, then you can't. Then you need the adapter and everything gets a little bit wishy-washy. So, um, well, we have a couple of cameras on it. Let's look at it from the front, from over there. That's what it is. It's pretty lightweight. It's got an 8-inch speaker behind this fabric. Uh, made out of wood and has a nice Tolex in it. From the top we can see there's a plastic handle but it feels very metally and it's really cool because you can really get your fingers under it. It's easy to carry with that without um, having anything stick out on top. So you can actually put things on top because it's a flat handle. On the back we don't have a camera because there's literally nothing on the back other than uh, the power. So there's no extra speaker you can hook up to it. There's no um, line out or anything because it's a beginner amp. Any beginner is not going to go and immediately hook this up to his computer to record full albums with it because it's a beginner amp. Take it, practice with it. Throw it backstage warming up for your band gig. It's cheap, it's lightweight, it makes total sense for that. I personally took it to Frankfurt when I uh, played in the Rockin' 1000, breaking the world record for world's largest band ever. Um, and I took it to the hotel room and learned all the songs in the hotel room. 
And it was great for that. It was lightweight. It had the sounds I wanted. It sounds great. Uh, really, really, really quiet, which you have to do in a hotel room. Um, I also had it uh, on the street when I tested the new Sennheiser wireless system. Why? Because it's lightweight. It's got the sounds I want. Worked well with the pedal. <laughs> From the top, if we look at the main, yeah, thank you, Leslie. Leslie is my lovely lady switching this video for you next door. There's a foot switch which doesn't uh, come with it. I don't know what you can switch with it, maybe like from one sound to another, uh, like a favorite kind of switch. Here we've got the input. Yes, you can run it with headphones, which is great for your parents and your grandparents and your sister and brother and all these people, so you, they don't have to listen to you. Here's the aux in, so no Bluetooth to play back sounds, but a normal jack. That's great, so you can practice along. You have the most, uh, you mo the most basic controls here. Gain, which is how much it's distorting. And see, it changed to red. As soon as I change something, it's telling you, hey, you changed something, do you want to save that setting? So, gain, which is how much does it distort. Volume, how loud is it for that sound. This is for all the sounds. And then you have treble, which is the high frequencies, and bass, which are the low frequencies. And then you have a master, which is how loud is everything. Here you see things that are going on. Here you have a knob that, can, that you can turn to edit things and pushing to confirm things. USB means you can hook it up to your computer for recording sounds, which, you know what, I will not test because this is not what I want from this amp. It can do that. Yes, you can hook it up to your computer to a recording software and record with it. But this is a beginner practice amp. Beginners very likely won't do that. I assume the sounds are decent. That's enough for me. So here we have a back button, a save button, a menu and a tap. Tap for a delay or tremolos to determine the tempo. Instead of giving it a certain tempo value here, you go tap, 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 tap in the tempo with the song and then it automatically has the right tempo. Now if we look at menu, there isn't much. There's a tuner which we will try. Here's a foot switch and you can say what two sounds the foot, foot switch goes to, so it was correct. Here are the settings. Um, really only how loud the USB out is, no more than that. This is a very simple amp. And restore to restore it back to its factory settings. So right here, if I push there, I can change what amp. I can change the stomp, so that means like a, an overdrive or distortion pedal, a virtual pedal. Modulation, delay, and reverb. Modulation would be like a chorus or flanger or phaser. And you don't know at all what I'm talking about if this is your first amp. But you can you know, explore things. So th the way you do this is you navigate to what you want to change. Right here, I want to change the amplifier. I push. Oh, no. Uh, I want to edit the amplifier. There you go. There's also middle, which you don't have a knob for. And if I click on this, you can actually change the amp. So let's see, we have a super clean, a champ, a deluxe dirt, five, 50s twin, the basement, Princeton. Those are all classic Fender amps. Deluxe clean, twin clean. Excelsior, small tone, 70s UK clean, 60s UK clean. Those are probably Marshall type sounds. 70s rock, 80s rock, doom metal, burn, which is probably very aggressive. 90s rock, alt metal, metal 2000, super heavy, and that's it. So not too many amps, but quite a few amps for the beginner. So if I just back out of here, unsaved, I'm back to the Fender clean. And we're gonna start with checking out some sounds. Actually, we're going to start with tuning this guitar. In this review, we're using my signature Harley Benton because any guitar in a higher price range is going to misrepresent anything, uh, everything, because even this Fender over there, which is about 1100, you're not going to have a guitar for 1100 bucks and play an LT25. You're going to have a beginner set. This guitar clocks in at about 400, which is already a little bit expensive. You probably have a guitar for about 200 to 250 and then your guitar teacher will recommend the LT25 because you don't need a tuner It's lightweight and it is all the sounds and you can practice with the built-in aux in so I'm gonna go to Leslie did a cutout Wanna throw that cut out? Yeah. <laughs> Look at the lady throwing the cutout on the screen um, So I go to menu tuner and we're gonna 
do some tune skis. You want to make sure it's all the way green and approach it from the bottom. So tune down and go up. That's always the most stable way to tune instead of going a little bit down. Perfect. G-string wasn't all the way there. So yeah, I went a little bit down again to approach the note from the bottom. Because otherwise, if it gets stuck on the cheaper guitar up here in the nut, and you're going down, maybe at some point it might slip through. So going in this direction with the string makes more sense. It's always the G-string. So, back. And here's the Fender Clean. Now, how are you hearing this if the USB isn't connected and this doesn't have a speaker out? Well, I'm micing it. The way you would mic guitar amps is with something called an SM57 from the company Shure or a Sennheiser E609 from the company Sennheiser. Those are classic amplifier mics or uh, cabinet mics, speaker mics, like you see in the back there on this Tone King. That's a Lewitt MTP440, really close to the grill, as we call it, uh, miking that big 12-inch speaker. Now, the thing that matters, but that's a, the thing is that is a close mic sound. It's like very much here. The thing that matters for the, this review is what does it sound like in the room? What does it sound like to you? So behind me, pretty much equidistant of where I'm sitting from the amp, we have a Lewitt LCT640, large diaphragm condenser mic, about $800, $900 or Euro. But that is capturing uh, with a different kind of pattern and it's capturing what's in the room. So hopefully what you're hearing in the video is very close to what you would be hearing from the amp when you're sitting next to it like I am. That's a beautiful sound for the standard cleans. It's compressed, which means it has a compressor in front of it. As we can see, if I push this, I go to stomp, and it says compressor. I can change that to low. So what, you, what this does is, when I'm playing, it makes sure everything is evened out dynamically. So if I play really, really, really quiet, it makes it loud. If I play really, really, really loud, it makes it the same as the quiet was. So really, really, really quiet. And really, really loud. The differences are, well, almost not there. So if I go back, how do I turn that off is the question. I don't know how I turn that off. How do I turn it off? None. Here we go. So it's off. See, now it's quiet. Now it's loud. The compressor makes it more even. So what's that? room sound. Well, that's the reverb. We can make that quite a bit quieter. So, can we pick a different reverb? Oh, yes, we can. That's a spring, which is something that used to be in all the or still is in all the big Fender amps. Let's listen to a couple of different 
reverb sounds. Hall. That's more than enough. The spring sounds great. So if I wanted to save that, well, I'd push save and I'm done. I love that clean sound. That'll do for many, many applications and it works well with external pedals if you want to start buying pedals. So we're going to go to Silky Solo. I have a little bit of a buzz here because this is a single call type pickup called a P90. It's a fat sounding single call gets less when I go in the middle. That's quite a bit more quiet. Uh, quiet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the amplifier, which is the burn, and I'm going to change the volume. So if I do this here, look at that. That changes it. Sometimes it's a little bit warmer and rounder, and sometimes it's a little bit more thinner and bitey. Is that the amp? No, you saw that I flicked the switch. So I'm changing from this single coil type P90 to a double coil, uh, which is a humbucker. Humbucker. It, hum it, it, it hums the book, it bucks the hum. I don't know. The less hum. Um, but the humbucker in the bridge position, meaning in the back here, that's the neck position, uh, will sound more bitey and more aggressive. So the difference. <laughs> And of course you can play both at the same time, which gives you different sounds. On this guitar you can push these things and then tons of different stuff happens. Um, that's a great lead sound. So if we go back here, navigation is really simple. Let's look at the delay. I think I want more of that. Delay is an echo. You hear the wub up, da -dub, da -dub. Now, the time is the milliseconds, 180 milliseconds. How many milliseconds do you want? You have no idea. You want dum, 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 dum. Well, then we do that. We tap it, dum, 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 dum. And you, what you want is 419. But you want that louder, right? Or le louder, as they say in France. They do not. Don't listen to me. That's great. You can do something when you're more advanced. Uh, that's called the dotted eighth trick, which is... sounds like way more notes that I'm playing because the delay is taking care of that. Um, then you have the feedback parameter, which is how many delays. Right now we've got one. One's not enough. We want more than one. There you go. So 
of really cool stuff you can do there. Uh, and wow, yeah, I mean, wow. That's like, how many times do you have to say wow? That's how woo, woo, is it? Um, let's see what other delays we have here. Uh, take a click of that. None. None is not a lot of delay. That's a digital delay, meaning it sounds exactly like the original. Reverse, it was reversed. No idea. That's it. Three different delays. That's more like a more like an analog delay. But hey, you know what? You're a beginner. That's all you need. Let's see what we have under modulation. Chorus. All this with distorted sounds. I probably shouldn't. How do I change that? Well, first of all, let's turn that delay way down. That's okay. A little bit faster. Good. Um, now we're gonna go to the amplifier. Gonna change that to right over here. It's super clean, but we have a little bit of drive. We're gonna find out why. Probably the stomp. Yeah, there's an overdrive. Let's turn that off for now. This is very easy to navigate. So here we have chorus, which sounds like this. Without. of a whooshy sound. It changes the volume, loud and soft. You can only tap the delay, so for the tremolo, apparently I gotta go and change the speed here. I love step filters. That's not that responsive. And that's all there is. Great. That's all you need. Um, let's look at what we have at stomps. There's an overdrive. That's the first thing that doesn't sound amazing. That sounds digital. Maybe not use that. Maybe not with that clean amp. That's possible because it's a super clean. Let's change that. Actually, let's do this. I'm, I'm very, I'm overwhelmed here. So, let's go through the different amps. That's rather nice. That amp's just had its I've seen its best days. That's just great.
like it. That would be super clean. Of course, Fender does all the Fendery amps really well. Well, who would have thought? But Bidey. Whatever that is, is nice. Something we would probably call a uh, plexi. Good! A little bit aggressive. I don't know any songs. If we have the delay on the whole time, but what do we? I care. It's fun. You already heard that for the lead sound. There we go. Fixed. We looked at, oh, pretty much everything it can do. Actually, we did. Now we skip through a couple of presets and see what they've done with it. really nice. the video an email from Fender comes in trying to sell me ex exotic wood guitars. How about I'm gonna deal with this and then I'll buy exotic wood guitars Fender. What do you think about that? That's very le pretty. Ah! 
don't know how this goes. Brett Mason kind of a leak. With a fuzz. Oh, we did not look at all the stomp boxes. Well, we didn't have to. We're going to look at presets. Do you think Metal Unicorn would approve? I don't know, I have no idea. Shazam! Yep, from the metal to the jazz, it's all in there! What's an Octobot? Poor crazy Octavy sounds. It's like a queenie kind of a sound. Get it, Royal Majesty? They're clever. I don't know any queen things. That works. <laughs> Super compressed. that guy back. Nice. That's, that's a lot of cool things. You don't even have to program anything. Don't be afraid. Just skip through the preset. something you will learn in your first lesson. Oh my god, there are so, so many. Oh, actually, not. There's 30. What's spice travel? Spice is what they say in the South. Like if they want to say, for example, that they're meeting someone in the afternoon around 12 o'clock in order to have a talk about space, they, they would say, I have a mate not known about spice. Just saying. 
My southern accent's perfect if I want to say that one sentence. Here's one that's very important. If you don't have an acoustic guitar and you start out on electric, strumming chords on electrics with a clean sound is not the same as strumming them on an acoustic. It's just a different sound. Now, if you want to simulate that, um, the best thing is to have a digital simulator like this, and that probably works really well. Yeah, because that's really different. That sounds phenomenally good. Now, before I give you my verdict of the amp, I have to disclose that I'm getting paid to do this review. Luckily, I don't have to bend anything I'm saying because it's great. I mean, it's 149 euro, which means it's bang smack in the ballpark of the budget of a lot of the parents of students that I've taught. I've taught for years. And this would have been a great beginner amp. I always recommended the Fender G Deck, which sadly, because they are somehow full of drugs somewhere, smoking things at Fender, I don't know. They're not making anymore. The Fender g Deck was literally the best student amp out there. It had backing tracks built in. You could loop on it and record your own loops. You could loop your own backing music that you pumped in from an iPod or phone or whatever and loop that bit and you could slow it down and speed it up. It had a tuner. It had an input for a student and a teacher so you and your buddy or you and your teacher could play with it at the same time. It had great sounds. The Fender G Deck was the absolute perfect amp for any student and any teacher and any student-teacher relationship and Fender decided not to make it anymore and I don't understand why. But since they're smoking things at Fender and they got rid of the G Deck, we need a new beginner amp to recommend. At 149 bucks, this has everything but not too much. It has quite a bit, but it just stops before it gets ridiculous in terms of options. And it has enough so that you can learn about the world of amplifiers. Uh, the classic Fender amps, some British things. You can get used to certain sounds. You can learn what an overdrive does versus a fuzz. You can learn uh, what an analog delay does versus a digital, digital delay. can say that. It's all there. So... It sounds that good. Does it sound massive? No, it's a little one eighth inch speaker in a 149 euro amp. Are you ever going to put a mic in front of it and record with it? No, please don't do that. Get a real amp for that. Does the USB uh, out help you record at home if you want to record something? Yes. Will those sounds be something you want to put on an album? No. Are you going to record an album with an LT25? No. You're going to be a beginner and it's great for that. I really like it to take with me if I have to practice somewhere. If I want to play in the living room, it's small, I'll just throw it in the corner, plug it in, done. Um, I like taking it to the hotel room. Uh, it is just at the price, at the weight, at the sound quality, it's a fun amp to play with. And most certainly highly recommended for beginners because they did away with the Bluetooth and the speaker out and all the frizzly whistle stuff. It's just... What it does, it does really well, perfectly targeted at their target demographic, which is beginners and people who want a little practice amp. No, Glenn, this is not a real metal amp because it doesn't try to be one. It's a practice amp and it's a good one. Highly recommended at 149. Um, I was a tiny bit disappointed from the GT40 because I always loved the Mustang series. Um, because the GT40 had two speakers and in the first incarnation that I had it in, there was a phase issue between, between the two speakers and it always sounded thinnish. This doesn't. It has one speaker. I think they fixed that on the GT40. This is right out the door great. I can't bitch about anything, most certainly not at that price. Well done, Fender. 
Links below. Thank you, Leslie. And at the end, there somewhere will be animals. Yeah.